Hey, it's Kermit Weeks here at Fantasy of Flight, and I've got my Sikorsky S39 behind me, and I think I'm going to go do a little Kermie cam for you guys, and uh, let's go uh, splash it. Maybe go up and down the ramp a little bit. We'll check it out, so follow me. Let's go. Okay, so this, uh, I've already been uh, flying it a little bit this morning, so I've already checked all the fuel and the oil and everything's fine. I just checked the, uh, uh, the floats for water. This, uh, this one right here had just a little bit of water in it, uh, but not a lot. We'll just look at this here, but I uh, can't really see it. Just, just about that much water in it, but uh, it's not a big problem. When you get a lot of water, it can be a big problem because then you have a weight and balance issue. So got to make sure we uh, line up the draft stripes have to be absolutely fashionable. So anyway, so I checked all the rest of it. That was the worst one right there. Um, let's walk around, make sure everything is doing okay. Of course, got the pedo cover off. Like I said, I've already been running the engine, so we don't need to pull it through. There goes Waldo with a happy rider. Uh, this particular airplane is painted up in the colors of uh, a Martin and Osa Johnson airplane that actually flew like in the, it was built in 1931, rebuilt by a gentleman by the name of Dick Jackson up in New Hampshire. This was a wreck that he found in the bush in Alaska. He spent 40 years and 40,000 man hours rebuilding this airplane. And I am so lucky to have acquired it. Uh, the original airplane was called the Spirit of Africa, but Igor Sikorsky was the gentleman that was the ran the company that uh, designed all these airplanes and built them. And uh, so he put the spirit of Igor on there, so pretty cool. Uh, we just put some tape on the oil cooler here. Uh, it was running a little bit cool, so we just kind of blank it off. I think the original engine might not have even had an oil cooler, so uh, not a big deal. Um, and anyway, so everything looks pretty good. I've already checked that float, and I've looked down inside the the hull here, but we'll look again. And we want to make sure that all the wires and everything are hooked up. Checked all these before, everything was running great. Now to get in this thing, this is kind of interesting, there's actually a little uh, thing right here that you can push, pop up. All the Sikorskys are like this. I've got that on my S38 and my S43. I seem to be the uh, Sikorsky king at this point on the planet. This airplane participated in the National Air Tour that Greg Herrick did. It's kind of interesting here, I want to point this out. You see it's got that really big tail wheel on it. You know why it's so big? Because it's also the water rudder when you get it in the, uh, in the water. That's actually steers. It goes back and forth for uh, steering on the ground and it's connected to the rudder, uh, but it also uh, steers in the water as well. So I don't see any oil leaks or anything. It was running great. And here we go. We got a couple of steps up here. I can grab this handle. There's a little hand grip right here. So I come up here, get up, pop the little thing. Down goes the handle. And I can check back in here to see if we got any water. Just a little bit, just a small amount of water there. That's not a problem. I was in the water for a while on a previous flight, so that's cool. Uh, of course, we have the matching upholstery for the thing. A little friend there is going to be my co-pilot for the, this mission. All right, so then we got that. I get to sit on that too. Everything is giraffe color coordinated. Versace's got nothing on me. Okay, uh, seat belt, there's only one shoulder harness that comes over. Just because of the way the airplane's laid out, I guess. It's the way Dick rebuilt the airplane. Okay, and uh, the way we start this thing, we turn the master on, alternator. These are all lights up here. We don't need those. Uh, carburetor heat is cold. 
we start out with the mixture lean. This was the original landing gear selector. Normally I wouldn't do that on the ground, but it's not connected. And for some reason, uh, when Dick Jackson rebuilt the airplane, uh, he decided that there was a better way to do it or whatever. And he actually installed these two separate valves here. There's actually an electrical switch under the panel here, which uh, if you click it up, the wheels go up. If you push it down, the wheels go down. And you do them one at a time. Here's the hydraulic pressure gauges. You want to have at least 800 on landing. So right now we're fine. Uh, when it's in the water and the wheels are up, it, uh, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, I mean, there's no, uh, there's no pressure. And uh, it's actually kind of nice, and th there's a little bit of crosswind on my seaplane ramp today, so I'll show you how we can use this to our advantage, um, having one wheel go up and one wheel stay up, uh, one go down, one, one stay up. Uh, okay, so I burned off of that tank, so we're going to switch over to the, this tank over here. Uh, that's actually, believe it or not, uh, the fuel gauge is backwards. We're going to get that placard fixed. Uh, so anyway, so right now we're on the right tank. Um, anytime I splash the airplane, I want to make sure that the windows are completely closed. And you see this little belt thing here? That's actually how you raise and lower the, the uh, deal. Alrighty, my little friend's comfortable. Okay, so to start this thing, we get a little bit of fuel pressure. I got a wobble pump right here. Now let's go ahead and close the canopy here. That locks right there. And believe it or not, I believe you can actually fly with this open. I haven't done it yet, but uh, maybe we'll try it one day. Okay, so here's the wobble pump right here. We're going to wobble up a little bit of fuel pressure. A little bit of fuel pressure, okay. And then we're supposed to go 18 times with this. Okay, that just pumps it in. Now we push the mixture forward, switch it to hot. Here's the starter button right here. And then once we get turning, we'll turn on the mags right down here. Here we go. Start. Mags are hot. And the first thing we always look for when we start our engine is to make sure we got oil pressure, which we do. Okay, we got fuel pressure from the engine. Oil temperature is fine. Uh, before it was running a little cool, like I said, it was about 60, and uh, when I was flying around that, we put that extra tape on there to kind of close it off. It was up around 70, which is about what we're looking for. So we still got good pressure on the, on the uh, landing gear uh, hydraulic pressure, and I pretty much zero the altimeter here. Fantasy of Flight's 141 feet above sea level, where I'm sitting right here, but, uh, you know, anytime I'm doing some local flying, I just go ahead and zero the altimeter. When I look at the altimeter, I know how high I am above the ground. So, all righty. Controls are uh, working here. Uh, we will taxi. brand new brake on the right side. It's got some new pads on it and uh, it's not worn in quite yet so I'm having to push pretty hard on the right brake till we get that thing worn in uh, and then it'll start grabbing. Plus I was just in the water and when you get them wet you know they kind of like put some uh, lubricant on them. They don't uh, respond as well. So you have to think about things like that when you're flying a seaplane. Okay now you can see the wind sock there. It's a little bit of a crosswind from the right. And one of the things that we do in seaplanes on the ground, as well as in the air, is we sail them. I've actually turned the wheel this way to drop that aileron down so the wind will push the uh, wing that way. The one that goes up doesn't really add any drag, but the one that goes down will actually push that wing that way because 
the airplane's going to want to swing back into the wind. It always wants the weather vane. You see, there it goes. See? Even with that aileron, see how the it's starting to go to the left? And actually, if I put the wheel this way, yeah, see, it might swing even more to the left. So anyway, so I keep the, keep the aileron over to keep that wing down. Uh, we got a taxi all the way down to the end of my 5,000 foot runway. We can wave to some of the cars uh, on Interstate 4. Yeah, we just turn a little bit so I can see where I'm going. It's got some nice uh, bungees back on the tail back there, or shock absorber, and it'll bounce a little bit if you get it into the uh, bumps here. Yeah, in the summertime, the grass grows in really well on my runway, but uh, we ended up uh, getting a few bumps, like right there in the wintertime. The grass uh, doesn't grow as well. And the reason is because when we built the runway, in effect, we had a 16-inch stabilized clay road base. So we effectively built the road, and then we tried to farm on it. And, uh, we probably should have had a little bit more topsoil in it, but uh, sometimes in the winter it gets a little spotty and it gets a little bumpy. So, anyway. is going to run out in front of you. I'd like to jump on that tire right there, I'll bet. Yeah, looking for, I got a little turn around here. We can turn around. I just got to wait till I see the white marker, not that one, the next one. Wants to buy a Powerball ticket, it's up to 80 million. I'm so glad they have that sign on my property. I always know when to buy a Powerball ticket. Okay, so just double check everything. Controls are all free. Yeah, alternator's on, master switch is on. The alternator was working earlier. It's only got a 12 and a half volt system. Uh, looks like it's got more now. There we go. And these are all lights, so we leave those off. Okay, so these are locked. We've still got hydraulic pressure, uh, altimeter. Oh, for some reason, I'm in a right turn. That's not working. That's supposed to be in the middle. Uh, so the oil pressure is good. Fuel, we're on the biggest tank, which is the right one. Uh, cylinder head temp's fine. Oil temp's uh, plenty good for takeoff. Uh, this. I use manifold pressure when I fly, but it's a fixed pitch prop. It doesn't have a variable speed propeller, so uh, I just so I don't over boost the engine. Uh, we'll use uh, 34 inches on takeoff or 33 and a half, whatever that red line is right there. I'll push it up to that, but I'll cruise around 25 inches. Uh, that seems to work pretty good. Kind of a slow climb, about 30 inches. So anyway, so uh, mixture is rich. Carburetor heats cold mags are. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a quick mag check, although it was running great. So we'll run it up to about 1700 RPM. Okay, it's running smooth. And you just see that right brake wasn't holding, so anyway, it'll, it'll wear itself in at some point. Alright, I'll close my window a little bit with my little strap here. And off we go.
Of course, we got a right crosswind. See this windsock there, so I'm going to have a little bit of right aileron in on takeoff. 